Sonic the Hedgehog will be Equestria Girls Chapter 5, A Road Trip of Introductions. All right, Betty, you better start talking right now. Who are you? What are you? She demands as they were exiting the entrance to Ponyville. I'm a hedgehog. I feel like that's kind of obvious. Sonic said, and I'm in big trouble. Oh, you're in big trouble? You're not the one who punched some government wacko back there, Rainbow argued. You think you have problems? I lost my rings. Rings? What are you talking about? Rainbow asked in confusion. Okay. Rings are how all advanced cultures travel between worlds, and now mine are on top of a pointy building I've only seen on your skin-tight t-shirt, Sonic explained. Hey! Rainbow Dash exclaimed. So I'd like you to take me to Camelot City so I can get my rings and use them to go to the Mushroom Planet, Sonic said. Mushroom Planet? Rainbow said. Yes! Sonic yelled in distress. Yeah, right, she said quietly. As she parked the truck on the side of the road, she turns off the truck and opens the door for Sonic to hop out. Okay, pal, out you go. I'm sorry, what? Look, this is actually the worst possible time for me to get into trouble, okay? You asked me to save your life, I saved your life. So please, go find your rings and your mushroom land. Hopefully, I'm gonna wake up in my room and pretend that this was all some messed up dream, okay? So goodbye. Rainbow said. Okay, goodbye, goodbye. Sonic slowly slides out of the truck and stands there in silence. Rainbow just stares at him strangely. Why aren't you leaving? Rainbow asks. I don't know where Canterlot City is. Sonic replies annoyed. It's west. West? Sonic asks. Yes, straight shot. You can't miss it, she said. Fine, that's fine. I'm totally cool with saying goodbye now. After he said that, he runs off at a high speed while Rainbow Dash looks in disbelief. A few seconds go by and Sonic comes back with his fur all wet, a few seaweed all around him, and a fish on top of his head. And he does not look happy. So, as I crashed into the cold dark water of the Pacific, I realized a few things. A. I have no idea where I'm going. B. Saltwater stings. C. I shouldn't be even on this planet right now, but I am. Why? Because you shot me, Sonic said. I know, you shot me, he yelled dramatically. Okay, I heard you the first time. You don't have to pile it on, good grief, Rainbow yelled back before she calmed down and sighed slightly. I'm wet, I'm cold, there's a fish on my head, and clearly I'm not going to be able to do this on my own, Sonic pleaded. Rainbow looks back at him as the fish he has on his head falls off. She took a moment to think about this. If her friends were here, they would go on board with this and help this little blue creature. She then looks back to Sonic, who was waiting patiently for her response. Alright, get in the truck, she tells him. Really? You're gonna help me? Sonic asks excitedly. He shakes off all the water and seaweed off of him which in results cause for all poopy. I guess it's a little bit my fault that all of this is happening to you, she admits. No, not a little bit. Entirely. It's entirely your fault. Okay, it's entirely my fault. Are you coming or not? Yes. He shakes himself off and his fur is back to normal. He hops back inside and closes the door. Road trip! Woohoo! Sonic yelled excitedly as he started looking at the road in all directions. Rainbow just sighs in annoyance. <sighs> what am I doing? And so they're back on the road again, on their way to Canterlot City to recover the little blue hedgehog springs. As she drove through the mountains, she decided to make a few points to the blue hedgehog during the so-called road trip that they were in. Alright, there's going to be rules on this trip. I'm actually not the type of person to make these kinds of rules, but I think they are necessary right now. So, number one, do exactly as I say all the time. Got it? Got it, Rainbow Lady. 
Will you stop with the robot lady thing? It's not my actual name. It's Rainbow Dash. I'm Sonic, he said proudly. Sonic! Sonic! She repeated his name so that she wouldn't forget. So you've been spying on me and my friends for years? I mean, I wouldn't call it spying. We were all just hanging out, only I wasn't invited and no one knew I was there. He explains while trying not to sound like he was a creepy stalker. I can't believe that crazy cranky doodle was right all this time, she said in disbelief. Yeah, you should call him super observant cranky doodle instead. Uh-huh. A moment of silence didn't last long as Sonic looks out the window and gasps. Oh my gosh, stop the car right now, Sonic said as he leans out the window to get a better look. What? Why? The world's largest rubber band ball? We gotta see it, Sonic said excitedly. No, no, this is not some kind of family run road trip, okay? The government wants to dissect you and arrest me. This is serious. Sonic doesn't listen to her as he was giving her the look and took off. But then comes back a second later with the red and white cap and three rubber band balls. Eh, you're right, it was lame. Gift shop was cool though, he said and then pulls out a sign that says, I love rubber bands. I got you a mouse pad. What are we gonna get there? He said in a fast pace as he pulled out a paddle ball and started hitting it faster over and over again. We'll get there when we get there, she said sternly, but Sonic just kept hitting the ball and staring at Rainbow. She then sighs as she looks back at the road. This is going to be a long trip.